Welcome to the Florida Department of Transportation District 5 Inspector Guidelines Training. The contents of this course include objectives of the course, about FDOT, mission, vision, and values, overview of operation centers, overview of inspector responsibilities, including administrative duties, daily work reports, general expectations and info, and safety. Objectives of this course. District 5 of FDOT has developed guidelines for project administrators, inspectors, and other consultant staff to promote efficient and effective administration of contracts. This course is designed to familiarize inspectors with administrative expectations and guidelines and share helpful information with inspectors that are new to District 5. About FDOT. FDOT's mission. The department will provide a safe transportation system that ensures the mobility of people and goods, enhances economic prosperity, and preserves the quality of our environment and communities. Our vision. As one FDOT team, we serve the people of Florida by providing a transportation network that is well planned, supports economic growth, and has the goal of being congestion and fatality free. Our values. The fundamental principles which guide the behavior and actions of our employees and our organization. They are integrity, respect, commitment, one FDOT, trust, and customer driven. The FDOT consists of a central office in Tallahassee, Florida, along with seven districts divided geographically across the state and Florida's Turnpike. Operation Centers There are six operation centers in District 5. They are located in Brevard, DeLand, Leesburg, Ocala, Orlando, and Oviedo. Each operation center has a specific geographic area and within this area is responsible for two major functions, construction and maintenance. There is an operations engineer, a construction engineer or managers, construction project managers or administrators, contract support specialists, a resident asphalt coordinator, and a final estimate specialist. In this section, we are going to discuss the administrative responsibilities of an inspector. Administrative, on-site expectations. All inspectors are expected to arrive on site as scheduled. If the contractor does not show up as expected within 10 minutes of their scheduled start time, follow the steps below. Contact the contractor and determine their arrival time. If you are unable to reach the contractor within 30 minutes, contact your project administrator. If you are unable to reach your project administrator, contact the next level FDOT staff member. If you are still unable to make contact, please contact your Consultant Construction Engineering Inspection CCEI, supervisor. You should have direction no more than one hour after arriving on site. Night work on-site expectations, and proactive planning. Items to be mindful of during scheduled night work. Make arrangements before your shift with your project administrator in the case the contractor does not show up or something out of their control happens, like weather, and they are unable to complete their scheduled work. After trying to contact the contractor, the project administrator may decide to take an alternative course of action. On-site expectations. Administrative. If you are able to reach your contractor and they are still planning to work but are running late, you should do the following. 1. Call your project administrator for direction. 2. If you receive direction to remain on site, use your time productively. You may choose to inspect maintenance of traffic and or erosion control devices if applicable. Complete 
other necessary housekeeping items, update your site source documentation, check your email, and respond to any pending items as needed. Site Manager, make sure your daily work reports are up to date. Administrative, submittal of daily assignments and activities via email. Each inspector shall email daily update reports to their project administrator. You will follow the format noted below. Use the following format, date, time in, time out, and please give a detailed description of the inspection you performed for the day. When submitting your daily assignments to your project administrator, you will reply all or forward the previous day's email to send the current day's report. Continue doing this through the end of the week. By the end of the week, you will have one email showing all daily update reports for the whole week. Your office will attach this end of the week email when they send the weekly timesheet to the project administrator for approval. Submittal of daily assignments and activities should include Noting all daily activities, including all time charged to projects, any time spent with no contractor on site, time spent reviewing any other projects, and any other relevant information. Make sure to copy your contract manager, your CCEI project manager, and subcontractor management, if applicable, on all email approval requests. Administrative Overtime Overtime will not be approved unless you have prior approval from your project administrator. Noted below are examples of work activities your project administrator may approve overtime for. Concrete pours Asphalt paving operations Taking samples, testing materials, and density tests. Subsoil activities such as survey, pile driving activities, and setting beams. Other items considered for overtime. There may be occasions when your project administrator may require you to be on site. Other examples of approved overtime are lane closures for interstate roads, busy intersections, etc. For emergencies such as sinkholes, a utility hit, or the contractor is working on a claim activity. Administrative. Work activities noted below are examples of when overtime will not be approved. Landscaping, placement of pavement markings, guardrail activities, fence, sod, signs, rebar activities. So as long as you are able to inspect prior to any concrete pour. Installation of stay in place forms, cleanup activities, erosion control activities, paperwork, and things you can complete the following shift. Inspector responsibilities, daily work reports. Daily work reports, also called DWRs. All inspectors are required to use the State Construction Inspection Quality Control Guide List as well as the DWR template. Contact your supervisor for assistance if you are unable to locate the guide list and the DWR template. The Daily Work Report template is provided to ensure daily work activities are submitted according to the department's procedures. Make sure you use the correct and or current controlling item of work on the DWR. 
all inspectors are required to start their DWRs on site while the contractor's crews are present. Continue to update your DWR as the day progresses and note each subcontractor as they are arriving or leaving the site. A DWR is required for every day of the contract, including weekends and holidays. Reporting weather and recovery on your daily work reports. Weather and or recovery days must be recommendations noted in the daily work report. Weather days. For weather days, the language under additional weather description must state weather day recommended due to contractor being unable to work at least 50% of the normal work day on predetermined controlling items due to and then state the weather condition. Recovery days. For recovery days, the language under additional weather description must state recovery day recommended due to contractor being unable to work at least 50% of the normal work day on the predetermined controlling items due to and then state the recovery work item. Other items to consider while you're writing your daily work reports are coordination and communication with other inspectors on site, ensure all tasks are handled, communicate the contractor's work activities scheduled for the day, determine who is handling quantity reporting and who is handling which subcontractors. In the unfortunate event, there is an accident on site, assign who will handle the accident reporting. All inspectors should note the weather conditions on their daily work reports. Inspector responsibilities. In this section, we are going to cover general items. General items. Items you will need are noted below. Each inspector is responsible to contact your project administrator for documentation needed for your project. Contract plans, specification packages to include supplemental specifications, special provisions, and technical special provisions, if applicable. Your contractor's emergency contacts, your project administrator's phone numbers, subcontractor's emergency contact numbers, and make sure to locate the standard specifications and design standards. Other items needed may also include the utility work schedule, also known as the UWS, plans, utility owner representative contact names and their phone numbers, the utility field contact names and their contact numbers, other, the contractor's job guide schedule, and approved shop drawings, general items, maintenance of traffic, review, weekly maintenance of traffic reports, inspect traffic control, daily, after any traffic pattern change, during and or after any lane or shoulder closures. Another general item is the stormwater pollution and prevention plan, also called the SWIP. Inspect stormwater pollution prevention plan devices weekly. Review the SWIP report weekly. Inspect after rain events on site. Check NTUs after rain events if applicable. General items continued. The approved products list, also known as APL. Look for APL numbers on equipment and materials, both for temporary and permanent. Verify 
the APL number or product is valid. Other things to consider. Your project administrator may assign you on other project related work or maintenance inspection as needed. Make sure to use the correct project code on your timesheet. If you are unsure what project code to use, contact your project administrator. You must charge to what you are doing and not necessarily to the contracts to which you are normally assigned and scheduled. All charging codes will be provided to inspectors by their project administrator. For any project change or assignment, follow up with a summary email to the project administrator, copying your CCEI consultant engineer and the FDOT hybrid contract manager. For example, per our conversation at X time, you, the project administrator, requested for me to remain on site for an additional hour to await the arrival of the contractor. If they have not arrived by X time, I will report to the operations office for an assignment to an alternate activity. Understand, 40 hours per week is not guaranteed by DOT. Always be mindful of the contractor's two week look ahead. Make sure you can get the proper equipment as needed. When time allows, be proactive in taking care of things such as taking cylinders, taking samples and doing testing, or any other items that needs to be completed or submitted to the lab. And take proctors and work on the density logbook. And the most important, safety. Identify and use the proper type of personal protection equipment required for various situations and activities. When to report safety issues. Anytime you see an unsafe work practice and when an accident occurs on the project. Know who the safety director is for the contract and the point of contact for FDOT. Safety. Inspectors should ensure they are following any internal traffic control plan developed by the contractor. Coordinate with the contractor to determine safe parking areas as well as proper access and egress points. You may also want to consider attending the contractor's toolbox safety meetings. This will help you stay up to date with any possible site changes. Safety. Constantly monitor maintenance of traffic. Check post mounted signs, barrier walls and attenuators, arrow boards, variable message boards. Inspect and make sure all pedestrian pathways are signed correctly. And drop off conditions. Now it's time to test your knowledge. Number one, if the contractor does not show up as expected and you are unable to reach them, how long should you wait to make contact with your project administrator? A, 10 minutes. B, 30 minutes. C, one hour. Or D, two hours. If you answered B, 30 minutes, you are correct. Question two, what work activities may be approved for overtime? A, signs. B, fence. C, pavement markings. Or D, lane closures at a busy intersection. The answer is D, lane closures at a busy intersection. Question three, is there specific language required when recommending 
a weather day? A, yes. B, no. Or C, depends. A, yes. There is specific language required when you are granting a weather day. Question four. Who is responsible to ensure the inspector has all documents needed for the contract? A, the project administrator. B, contract support specialist. C, the CCEI contract manager. D, the inspector. The correct answer is D, the inspector. This concludes the training. Thank you.